My name is Anil Ramlal and welcome to this video entitled Downy Mildew and Cicospora Leaf Spot in Bitter Melon. What is Bitter Melon? Bitter Melon is also known as Bitter Gourd. It is a cucubit crop of the cucubitaceae family and is also known as Carala and Carola depending on where it is grown it is a vegetable fruit that can be used as a food or a medicine the origin is quite unclear as many literature sources would say that it has originated in several different tropical countries in terms of where it is grown it is grown in tropical and subtropical countries and it is considered as the most bitter among all fruits and vegetables. In Trinidad, it is known as Carayli, and it has several different spellings to its pronunciation. Now this here is the taxonomy of the bitter melon. As you can see, it is a member of the Cucubitaceae family, the genus Mormodica, species Mormodica charantia. In terms of the nutritional value, as you can see here, it contains several vitamins listed here, as well as several minerals such as potassium, calcium, zinc, etc. It also has many antioxidant properties and is a very good source of dietary fiber. In countries such as India, it is extensively grown, as you can see, and it is grown for commercial cultivation. Um, it has a very high demand in a country like India, as opposed to Caribbean countries such as Trinidad, where it is only grown for local consumption. And it is a very popular vegetable consumed by the East Indian community, but is loved across the various ethnic groups. In terms of the planting material, seeds are available. In terms of local land races and commercial seeds. In terms of how we use bitter melon and in terms of the health benefits, the fruits are normally cut into smaller pieces where it is either steamed, fried, or cooked alongside other vegetables. It is eaten with rice, roti, and wraps. Some persons prepare it by stuffing it as well as baking. Prior to the use of fruits, they are normally soaked to reduce that bitter taste that is contained within it. The health benefits is considered very, very important because it has anti-diabetic properties, which are listed here. The charantin, the vicine, the polypeptide B, the lecithin. And the vines and fruits, according to Clady of Tennessee State Agriculture, he states that in Asia and Africa, the leaves, vines, and fruits are used as herbal medicine for many ailments. As you can see here, I listed some of the ailments that it does help with in terms of ulcers, diabetes, anti-cancer properties, and several others. As with many other crops, Bitter melon is affected by several diseases and in this video I will be talking about two in particular. Donny mildew caused by Pseudoporonospora cubensis and Cicospora leaf spot caused by Cicospora citrullina. Now Donny mildew is one of the more important diseases of bitter gourd. It was reported for the first time in 1868. And it is one of the more serious diseases 
especially during the monsoon period, such as in, in Asia, as well as in the Caribbean during the wet season, which both monsoon and wet season of both regions are quite similar. And this disease causes severe defoliation and reduces the yields, affects the fruit quality, and causes sunburns and post-harvest losses. The pathogen is an omycete or water mold and the optimum conditions required are very wet conditions, humid conditions, and very low temperatures of 15 degrees Celsius and a lot of moisture. Hence, I mentioned before the monsoon period and the rainy periods of several regions would help in the sporulation of the omycete causing the infection on the host crop. Now the visible symptoms on the host you would see water soaked, yellow angular lesions, the upper surface of the leaves that are restricted by the leaf veins. Now this eventually causes infection of the tissues turn brown and eventually spread resulting in that defoliation. In terms of some of the control methods farmers utilize, what they would normally do is they maximize the spacing distance to avoid the disease from spreading very quickly throughout the field as well as allowing the airflow to reduce the amount of moisture level within the planting area and they also avoid overhead irrigation and practice trip irrigation which reduces the splash of water allowing soil to splash the pathogen onto the foliage of the plant and causing that spread of the disease throughout the field. Chemical control is the most likely um, method used to control the disease as farmers would, up, would spray their fields with chemicals and fungicides prior to the appearance of the symptoms and they normally spray these fungicides in a rotational manner in order to prevent the resistance of the disease to these fungicides. As you can see here, the angular shaped spots that are within the leaf margins and the leaf veins, I should say, sorry, the leaf veins, these angular shaped spots, this disease progresses, it spreads and causes necrosis throughout the vines and the leaves. And eventually the death stage where you get necrosis of the entire leaf and eventually the plant dies. Sucosporal leaf spot is the other disease. And this also causes severe defoliation when the conditions are right. Now the conditions for this disease to proliferate is high humidity and high temperatures, which are both in the tropics and subtropics. It is a very important foliar disease and it does cause reduced yields, smaller fruits, sun spells, and poor post-harvest quality. Now it first begins, this disease first begins with small circular whitish spots that appear on both sides of the leaves, both the upper and lower surface. In favor of the condition, these dark brown spots eventually enlarge in and they coalesce forming irregular, irregular lesions with whitish center and dark brown spots. The cornelia of this pathogen become airborne and they may be carried great distances on moist winds. Now the infection of Sucospora requires free moisture and 
high temperatures as mentioned before so high humidity and high temperatures as opposed to dawn humidity that requires low temperatures high moisture and high humidity and in the advanced stage these fructations of the fungus the conidia and the conidiophores develop at the center of the spots and the heavy infection of the disease may be significant and cause defoliation and death of the entire vine In terms of the control methods, adequate spacing, just like Donny Mildew, you would want more airflow in the field as well as to reduce the spread. So you space out your crops. In terms of the chemical control, fungicides such as Crotolanil, Mantazeb are the protective fungicides and the use of sterile inhibitor type fungicides as well are also used to aid in the disease developing and spreading throughout the entire crop. This is how Cicospora is at the first signs. As you can see, a grayish tan spot begins right here. As you can see, the circular light spot, this appears on the upper surface and the lower surface. As you can see, as the disease progresses, get more of these tiny spots progressing and eventually causing yellowing of the entire leaf as you can see the brownish margin around the spots eventually the coalescing the coalescing of these spots or the spots coming together forming large legions lesions here that eventually defoliate the leaves and as you can see the conidia that is formed at the middle of these spots of these lesions and defoliated leaves and this causes leaf death and vine death and eventually the losses such as lower yields and eventually the crop comes to an end So, I hope you learned a lot more about Donnie Mildew and Sucaspora and its importance. And in conclusion, I would like to just mention that key, com key combative points that you would want to incorporate in getting rid of these diseases or preventing its spread are using adequate spacing reducing drip irrigation i mean using drip irrigation as opposed to your overhead methods as well as utilizing the appropriate fungicides and fungicide rotations using them in a timely manner using the most effective ones to reduce the incidence of disease building resistance to these pesticides and using the preventative before the first signs of both diseases. But chemical control is only used as the last resort when other methods have failed. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my video.